In this video, I'm going to unbox the Easy Fermenter system that I recently discovered and also compare it to some other fermenting vessels that I've used over the years and give you my initial impressions, thoughts, pros and cons. How's it going guys? This is Chris back with another episode of TGIF, Talking Gut Immuno Fridays, where we talk about gut health, sinus health, and improving your immune function through lifestyle choices. So if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so you never miss another video again. I've gone ahead and I've prepared the supplies that we would need uh, to use this based on what I saw on the outside of the box. I haven't got into this yet, I just basically did uh, a uh, one of our subscribers actually told me about this system and in one of my older videos where I had done uh, it's called if you haven't seen this one yet it's called homemade probiotics and save hundreds of dollars and I did some fermented carrot juice at home and that's the old way I've been doing it for a long time I've tried some other vessels that I'll show you after this but this seems like a really intuitive and easy way to get into fermentation if you're trying to reap the benefits of an anaerobic fermentation trying to make sure that we're getting all the good microbes in and keeping the bad ones out and reducing the chance of mold and things where people use a semi-closed fermentation like uh, just putting either just putting a cloth over it or just a regular lid on a ball mason jar the easy fermenter system I full disclaimer I do not sell this or anything I'm trying this out for the first time myself and then if you come back in 30 days after a ferment, I'll have a new video and we'll, we'll look at the results together and see how it goes. But this seems pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and unbox this thing together. Um, here's the box initially. Pretty simple design. And we're going to go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. Right on the top, they've got a user guide, which looks pretty straightforward. Only a couple pages. They talk in here about joining their fermenting club where it looks like it's a VIP thing. I don't know if that means you're gonna like have some kind of free trial and you're gonna have to pay. I, I have no idea. I haven't checked that out yet so I don't know. Um, this uses a standard mason jar which I already knew from reading that online. So I've gone ahead and I've put my salt water brine in there. So for carrots, for instance, I chopped up some carrots and then just like any other ferment, you got to make sure you have the water above so there's no vegetables showing. So if you got any floaties, you got to weight it down. Carrots don't float here in these, especially in these big chunks. So got to get all the carrots or whatever you're fermenting down below the brine. So for two cups in this case, I had to use 10 grams of salt. So in fermentation, you gotta have a cheap scale of some kind. This is just a gram scale uh, out to the hundredths decimal place. So I have that, and then I can get the um, perfect amount of salt. You don't need any fancy salt. This is just sea salt that I bought at, at a store, really cheap. Um, and that's going to give you the perfect environment to ferment. Um, there's a chart that I'll put up on the screen now that will show you the different brine percentages and how many grams in salt. And then also if you go on the Picklet's website, they have a great article that talks about the different things that you're fermenting and what percentage of the brine that you need to make. Anyways, so we've got the user guide here. And then when we continue to pull it out, here's an air pump. So this air pump is for pumping out some, uh, as you go through the fermentation, you're going to have um, some carbon dioxide that's in there and, and some oxygen as well. We want to pump out any remaining oxygen that you don't do that right away in the ferment. Uh, you'll do it after a certain period of time, which I heard that they talk about in the instruction manual. Um, yep, just like anything else, you got to leave some space there. And then the vacuum extractor here, it looks like they're talking about it in the manual. Yup, so you only, you only need a, a couple pumps there. And especially if you open it up to check it, you can kind of reseal it using the, the vacuum pump. And then we have 
three of, here is the, the main product right here. This is the lid. Looks like it's well constructed. And this is essentially kind of like an airlock that maybe you've used if you've ever done a fermentation before. This is a little airlock that you'd put in the top of a jar. Um, and it, I have some other jars I've used. I couldn't find it somewhere in the basement, but this one will stick down into a jar and you can use water. And this would create a similar environment, apparently. So with this kind of jar, they also have on here, they have a little date setter. So you can set on here the day that you're starting it. So let's see, I'm recording this on August 3rd. And so I went ahead and just set that there. It just reminds me um, of when I set it. And then let's look at what they say. We prepared our ingredients, we added our brine, and then we just apparently twist on the lid. It's got this nice little ledge here that makes it really easy to turn on to the jar, or so we will see. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice, I can get a real good grip on that without, and get it nice and tight there without a real issue. So here's what it looks like. I've got my carrots below the brine there. I've got my salt water in there. I set the date. And now we would wait for 30 days. I'd store this in some place around 68 degrees to very low 70s, like 72. Right around that is the perfect fermenting environment. So if you have a basement or a cellar or something like that, that's a great fermenting environment for veggies. That seems pretty straightforward and I really like that. That's the big advantage of it. Um, I can't initially think of any big cons with it. I mean, they're pretty cheap on Amazon compared to something like a crock. You know, this is the traditional crock that I've used. <laughs> you might be able to see there's some dust on it. I haven't used it in a while because I've mostly been using jars of different types and they come with some weights. And then you put a water seal around the barrier here. So this would be great if you were doing large ferments, but the disadvantage here is the um, is the cost and the space that it takes up. Inside the box, they have two more of these, so it comes with three of those jar lids. So you could do three different, and you could use different ball mason jar sizes. You're not limited to this. It just has to have that three and I think it's three eighths inch um, standard lid size. And then you could have different things going at the same time with different brines. So it comes with those three lids. I think they also have another option on there that you can buy four lids without a vacuum pump, um, which I'm not totally sure why you'd want to do that. It makes sense to have the vacuum pump. But uh, easy way to get started in fermenting, if I do say so myself. You also have the option that I've used before, and you will see uh, if you saw my previous video, which was many years ago now, um, but that uses the airlock systems, and that's the picklet jars. It's P-I-C-K-L, uh, yeah, dash it. And if you go to, if you check out their website, again, I, I don't sell any of these products. Um, it's just more for my own interest in continuing to learn how to ferment uh, with greater ease. Uh, very nice product there. It seems like it's constructed well. I didn't have any problems with the dial. And then you can see in the center there is where the vacuum pump will go over. And it looks like the vacuum pump creates a nice, it actually sticks to the lid. So that's nice. We know it's getting a good seal around there. And as I pull it, I can feel some air being extracted there. I feel the vacuum. So that's great. We know that that seems to work just fine. Obviously very simple, very easy to use. And my initial impressions are that I like it. And if you check back in 30 days, I'll, this ferment will be complete and we'll see what the results are. I'd love to hear guys uh, what types of things that you use for your own fermentations at home. Have you used this product? Have you found a similar product that you like more? I'd love to hear about it. Fermentation is a great way to help you maintain your gut health, to get those healthy microbes in every day. I hope this was helpful, guys. This has been another episode of TGIF, Talking Gut Immuno Fridays. If you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so you never miss another video again. 
I try to post every Friday, whenever I can, at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So be sure to check back next Friday, and I look forward to seeing you next Friday.